The following program was made possible by the generosity of those who have determined to hold fast to the true Roman Catholic religion, as expounded by the Roman Catholic Church before the disasters of Vatican II and the so-called New Mass. Hello and welcome to What Catholics Believe. I'm your host, Thomas Nagley. With me tonight is Father William Jenkins. He's a member of the Society of St. Pius V. He's also the pastor of Immaculate Conception Church right here in Norwood, Ohio. Hello, Father. How are you? Great, fine, Tom. Good. Yourself? Good. Good. Doing well, Father. Thanks for being here. Glad to hear. Well, Father, the uh, decade of the 2020s is not off to a very great start, uh, to put it mildly, perhaps. Mm. We... Uh, Obviously, have everything we've been dealing with the uh, the coronavirus, the COVID nineteen pandemic, um, and uh, among other things. But uh, the 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 latest problem we've been dealing with is the uh, the riots that have been occurring um, in cities all across the the United States. I believe even some international cities uh, in in response to this uh, killing of this George. Uh, George Floyd, um, man in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I'm sure most of our viewers are, are very familiar with the, the story by this time. But Father, um, what what is your reaction to to all of these uh, protests, all of these riots uh, that we see going on uh, across, like I said, the entire United States? They're, they're causing all kinds of damage, um, burning businesses to the ground, literally um, looting stores, all, all kinds of, of unimaginable unimaginable, terrible things. Um, what, what is your response to all of this? It's all part of a plan. It's all being orchestrated. Um, you know, the whole idea of the, the lockdown and then the, the attempt to open the businesses of the country once again, uh, and then having this happen. Uh, this is not an accident, okay? It's, it's, it's planned. There's this like repeated hammer, hammer blows is what they're trying to do. Ultimately, I think it's the same people behind everything. Ultimately, I think it's the same people who have been be behind everything uh, from the impeachment of Trump to uh, to uh, the COVID-19 uh, thing. Not, And I don't mean uh, necessarily the, you know, uh, I'm talking about the, the politics, the political yeah. side of it. Uh, to this uh, orchestrated insurrection that's going on right now. Um, and, and the reason why I say, Tom, is that I, I just think it's all tied together and I don't think any of it is, is accidental, is because it, it's all happening, um, it's all happening in sync. Everything is happening together. I mean, why, why is it that in various cities around the nation, are piles of bricks showing up on, on street corners and various other areas, uh, downtown areas, uh, overnight. They, they just appear there, and they're used the next day by rioters. I mean, how does that happen by accident? Um, and um, we just talked to the wife uh, today of one of the sheriff's deputies who's now helping to guard the... Uh, Justice Center downtown Cincinnati, and again, I mean, there there are things that the uh, deputies are, are witnessing there that are just uh, not coincidences. I mean, uh, one ha would almost get the impression that there is some malicious billionaire somewhere who is shelling out a lot of money uh, on this, All, not only himself to his immediate. Uh, let's say underlings, but they are in turn passing that money on down the line, even to handing it out to rioters on the streets in Minneapolis and perhaps Cincinnati and uh, Los Angeles and Chicago and places like that, <clears throat> to actually finance all of this. Um, the idea that they're doing this in, uh, you know, to somehow vindicate George Floyd is, is, is uh, absurd. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not, it's an insult to George Floyd and his family. His family has pleaded for people to stop doing this, you know. Um, but, uh, I mean, everybody has to admit, I mean, if this man was uh, was murdered, there has to be a justice done because of that, right? 
And from the looks of things, it appears that he was. I mean, as far as anyone can tell. But there's always more to be said. I mean, there, there, there are there two sides to this story? I don't know, but we have to hear it. If there are, we have to hear this out. This is the way we do things. Uh, we don't have a summary justice, so to speak, uh, just a mob, mob rule here. But uh, what these people are doing, what the rioters are doing, are basically justifying the death. The, the rioters are justifying the, 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 the murder of uh, George Floyd, essentially. Because their, their idea is, uh, if you hate somebody, you can destroy his business. If you hate somebody uh, because you feel that he's been attacking you, oppressing you, whatever, you're okay to hit him with bricks. You're okay to beat him, have mob, a mob beat him. And, I mean, isn't this basically the same thing as saying if you're a police officer and uh, you, you find personally somebody is a threat to your society and is a, uh, you feel that he's a criminal, you, you can go ahead and kill him. I mean, is this not a form of mob rule, you know? Um, so these people are, are just, uh, uh, well, so many of, of them have said, well, I'm, I'm in it for the money. I'm just out here to loot and rob yeah. and steal while I can, you know, and kind of cash in while I can. Uh, and no one's going to stop me. Uh, others are genuinely upset, but of course, and, and angry about what happened to George Floyd and, you know, others. They, and, uh, um, but, I mean, the vast majority of those people don't seem to be the ones who want to smash other people's property. They just want to make a point that we're really upset about and angry about this. We want it stopped. But they are, unfortunately, being used as cover for Marxist agitators, Antifa, and, and, and who knows what other groups are involved in that, um, who will just see the opportunity to... Um, Cause again, uh, kind of uh, civil unrest, and, violence, and and the, the objection, the, the purpose, I'm sure, is to do exactly what what we've been told all along. They want to end the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. They want to get a leftist. They want to get a bona fide, died in the wool leftist in there uh, to continue their program. And I'm not talking about the program necessarily of the looters, and I'm not talking about the program of the protesters who are really there to protest. And I'm not talking about even the revolutionaries, I'm talking about the people who are funding all this, the people who are orchestrating all this. It's their agenda. What is, uh, that, that's what they want to achieve in, in this way. It reminds me of the French Revolution. Just think of French Revolution, stir up public unrest, 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 make accusations, uh, get people so angry, um, they, 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 they just, are out of control, uh, but always behind the scenes, you have the hidden hand controlling, mm -hmm. controlling it all, directing it all. And Father, you mentioned these Marxist groups. Isn't this one of the very definitions of, of communism? To you know, we talk about the the dialectic and mm -hmm. history to destroy what is, so that what is what is going to be can can come mm -hmm. next. And you know, we hear a lot of talk about the the system, the evil system, and how we just need to, uh, you know, do away with this and kind of have the, this new system come in, this new order come into place. So isn't this kind of one of the... Well, who's who's really uh, getting smashed in this? The, the middle class. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. talking about the middle class businesses yeah. being wiped out. The middle class has, has small businesses that are wiped out by the shutdown. Yep. And on top of that, as soon as they start trying to get back on their feet again, even open their doors for business, they're 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 literally smashed by these protesters, so-called. Yeah. These these, they're not. These are not the protesters who are doing this. These, as I say, are just terrorists. Uh, who is it? Uh, Attorney General William Barr, so basically the domestic terrorists. And this is what this is what is going on here. But you know, in in the Marxist scheme of things, there's no room for a middle class. There's only room for the owners and the non-owners. There's the uh, bourgeoisie and the proletariat, right? They're the, the lords and the, and the slaves. There, there's no room for any middle class. That's why they had to wipe out the kulaks in the Ukraine uh, back in the 1930s, uh, which was totally covered over by the New York Times and Walter Ant, right? Um, the, and again, New York Times is still doing what it does best, right? right. Um, and it isn't the truth. But um, 
But this is another uh, attempt, again, to fit humankind into that Procrustean uh, bed of Marxist, uh, the Marxist formula, right? The, the haves and the, and the have-nots. And uh, those who are worker owners, who own businesses and work, what we know as the middle class, uh, they have no, there's no room for them in a, in a Marxist socialist system, and they have to be wiped out. And I, I'm afraid this is what we see happening before, the, the attempt anyway, happening before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, how, how do you fight this? What do you do to combat this? Because, I mean, obviously, there, there's not a whole lot of uh, logic or, or reasoning that one can do with these uh, so-called protesters and, and rioters. What do, you, what do you do to stop this? How do you fight it? Uh, well, first of all, uh, there are a number of, uh, of ordinary citizens who decided that uh, they are going to show up and they're going to protect not only their own businesses, they're going to protect others too. And uh, there are uh, reports about uh, uh, white and black teaming up and uh, sometimes even uh, black men standing there uh, between the businesses and the would-be looters and, uh, and destroyers and refusing to let them pass and protecting, well, whether they're black-owned businesses or white-owned businesses, it doesn't matter. They're not, they're not going to go along with this and they're going to put themselves in the way. Now, ordinarily, you'd say a police force would do that. You know, in some cities now, they've called up the National Guard, uh, but even the National Guardsmen are kind of overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the viciousness of these these uh, operatives, right, of violence. And you're right. I mean, violence is an absolute um, uh, prerequisite for Marxist takeover. The whole idea of Marx is destruction, destruction, destruction because of class warfare, that destruction is the key to progress, in fact. And the more destruction and the faster, the more progress you're going to make. This is Marx's formula. Uh, the dialectic, exactly as you say, right? Smash the thesis, in other words, the status quo with the antithesis, right? Which is the, what, these, what these rioters are doing. And you're going to have a new synthesis and it's going to make progress. That's Marx's whole formula right there. And um, no, you can't reason with this because it's anti, it's not only irrational, it's anti-rational. And you, you can't reason with the irrational. You have to try to make them rational. <laughs> but with those who are anti-rational, who are validly anti-rational, determinedly, willfully so, there's, there's no way. Um, as, I was, as I said, I was talking to the wife of one of our uh, noble deputies uh, uh, standing you know, at, between, basically, the justice center and the crowd that wants to destroy it. And uh, she said that the, 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 guard, the, uh, the uh, deputies saw there was something going on in this crowd. And they looked closer and uh, they said uh, the crowd kind of parted and there's a witch. There's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a witch cast, casting a hex or a spell on the deputies there. Wow. So, I mean, the fact that you've got uh, the occult involved, this, this isn't surprising. This, this whole effort is straight out of hell. It's exactly where it comes from. Just as it did in the French Revolution, this madness of uh, this bloodlust, you know. Mm -hmm. And what came out of it was, it was the great terror. And so it was uh, that tyranny will come out of this, and the great terror will come out of this. <clears throat> but his name will not be Trump, I don't believe. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it will not be a red state. Uh, the, all of this is happening in blue states or, uh, or Democrat run uh, cities, okay? Yeah. Uh, the, very, the very places that need to be bailed out now because fiscally they're totally irresponsible. And um, so this is the kind of thing we're, we're witnessing now. Tucker Carson has uh, actually issued a, a pretty strong statement about this and, you know, I don't agree with everything he says, but I think he made the point here. He, he's saying that President Trump wants to act decisively but the governors are not cooperating and they're holding him back because, um, well, some have, have called the National Guard, some have not. And uh, oddly enough, one of those who had not, at least as of today, called the National Guard was uh, 
de Blasio in New York, de Blasio is a, a Marxist, he's a Marxist, makes their bones about it. And he treats the, the, the police terribly. Um, I mean, not only is it insulting, but I mean, I, I, would, I would consider it dangerous how he demeans the police. <clears throat> and favors, I mean, even his own daughter was arrested as one of the, uh, one of the protesters slash rioters. And he uh, publicly congratulated her for it. You know, so what did the police of New York, policemen of New York, supposed to, supposed to do? Now, I don't think the New York police officers, and it's the most gentle people in the world, <laughs> any more than I think the, the park police of Washington, D.C., are the most, you know, gentlemanly when they're on, on the job. Um, as I've seen at the March for Life, you know. Um, but I do think they're kind of no-nonsense law and order. Uh, are there some bad police? Well, of course there's some bad police uh, everywhere. Um, everywhere, you know, throughout the world, I'm sure there are, because, uh, <coughs> I mean, let's face it, there are bad grocers and there are bad, there are unworthy priests too, right? Um, so we understand. We understand original sin. We know how this works, right? The point is not to allow them to do these things, right? Uh, to do the bad things they do. But I think the vast majority, vast majority of police officers are honest to goodness uh, United States citizens who want to uh, protect their communities and are willing to put themselves uh, in harm's way to protect their communities. And they're very honorable and decent men, and women, too, actually. And uh, so, um, I, I just can't imagine undercutting them and stabbing them in the back when they're out there on the streets trying to do their job under these circumstances. Um, but I also, well, listening to Tucker Carson, what he had to say, he says that Kushner, uh, Trump's own son-in-law, is, is blocking, is, is doing everything he can to hold him back from taking decisive action about this. And he mentions this is not unusual for Kushner to be influencing this way. Now, I don't know. You know, it's just interesting coming from uh, this mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson that this is what he's saying. So it, it's a curious, it's new to me. I, I, I didn't realize there was that yeah. Yeah. Uh, factor involved. But the, uh, the fact is, it, it, this fits perfectly with prophecy. Okay, it fits perfectly with prophecy, and the prophecy, the Catholic prophecy, always starts from the root cause of all of this, and that is evil, and the evil of the human soul, and that's sin. The sins that we commit are actually behind all of this, and uh, and what can be done about it? Well, we, we've got to stop sinning. We've got to stop offending God. As our lady said at Fatima, we have to stop offending God ourselves, but then we have to begin making reparation for not only the sins we have committed, but for the sins of others too. We've got to beg God's mercy. But we can't be begging God's mercy at the same time we're mocking God's mercy. And we're mocking God's mercy if we have the sin of presumption, thinking we can just keep sinning and nothing's going to happen. So, I mean, what do we expect? Is it terrible that, that these things are happening as a result of our sins? Yes, it is. But there's one thing that would be worse, and that is if we can just sin and sin and sin and nothing happens. That'd even be worse. That'd be make us think what the, the, the atheists and the agnostics think. Well, gee, God can't be mocked and nothing happens, you know? Like the pagans of old used to, you know, blaspheme and saying, look, I'm still here, you know? They're, where is your God, right? You even read about this in the Psalms, right? They are saying, where is your God? All of these things. Look what we're doing. And your God isn't objecting. We don't see any problem with it. And... Um, so that would be even worse if we could sin and sin and sin, if we could commit all these terrible abortions and all of this, um, this perversion and all the rest and nothing happened. But you know, eventually, um, it's not that we exhaust the mercy of God. It's just that when we say, Lord have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us, we're mocking that mercy. And it's as though God is saying, well, have mercy on yourselves. Have mercy on your own souls now. Have mercy on your own country. Have mercy on your children. And stop, stop sinning. Because the scripture says, the man who uh, sins hates his own soul. And uh, when, even when God does inflict a terrible punishment, it is all aimed to convert and save souls. Even then. To convert and save souls. So even if there's a terrible punishment coming, 
it's ultimately going to be for the sake of salvation of souls. Mm -hmm. And not the death of the sinner, but that he be converted and live. Uh, you notice, Tom, that uh, with this virus and, and all the political stuff, I mean, there are people who are very much afraid of the virus, and the, and the fear was being ramped up and ramped up and ramped up by the media and certain medical spokespeople. Um, um, but uh, there were people who were ten times more afraid of the political uh, intrusions and even tyranny that was being imposed upon the United States of America in the name or, you know, because of this virus, supposedly. And that was much more terrifying and much more devastating. Uh, that there are more deaths attributed to the political response to it. I wouldn't even call it a response, political reaction to it. Because there wasn't a rational response, right, so much. And then there were to this virus itself, you know. Even though the numbers of deaths attributed to the virus were, were again, being amplified, you know. And uh, I was told by, by a doctor, and he told me himself, well, the reason why, you know, not only are politicians looking to wrap up these numbers, but doctors, because it's so much easier to write COVID-19 on a death certificate than it has to have to explain why somebody died, or even maybe to cover malpractice. Who knows, you know? Or just plain laziness. So anyway, there's a lot of collusion going on here in this whole thing, too, to ramp up the fear. But people are really terrified about what's happening to our country. And now we find the hammer blows coming and coming and coming. And uh, it's like waves or tsunami washing up one after another. But they're being generated somewhere. It's no accident. And I, I really do believe that this is an all-out assault on what's left of Christendom. There isn't much, you know, for compared to what it was, but an all-out assault to try to bring down, bring down the United States of America. That they're going for broke now. Because people see now, they see what's been going on with the politics behind this uh, COVID-19 thing. They see what's going on. People now are waking up and realizing there's something afoot here. And uh, they're beginning to get wise to it. And I think the one-worlders, the globalists, now realize that they've played their hand uh, they, they've made it very clear that many of the people are onto them now as to what they're up to. And um, they feel, I, I believe, they feel as though that this is the time they have to go for broke. And they're going to go for broke and do whatever they have to do to just smash and smash and smash until they succeed. And the only way, the only way physically to stop them is if Americans... Um, Stop them. Actually, physically stop them. Stop the rioters. Physically stop them. Right? With like a wall that doesn't give right, to them. And drives them back. And drives them back into their, uh, into their dens, okay? Or uh, the holes in the ground where they came from, right? Like the locusts. Um, and the only thing they understand is force, okay? So when they bring forth uh, that the American people are really witty, willing to resist that force. Mm -hmm. okay, they're, they're willing to resist it. And, uh, and then to, uh, I think they, they, they have to understand that they have to elect, they have to make sure their elections are honest and not take all these excuses about, about mail-in ballots and all that other stuff. They have to insist on electing people who are absolutely unyielding and they can trust. Time and time again, I mean, the American people have been electing people who have been all talk. Talk to a good game if they get in and there's either they have no spine or they have no integrity, one or the other, right? They have no courage to resist the pressures, whatever it is, but they don't stand up for the promises they've made. They don't stand up the promises they made and the people who elected them are betrayed. So the honesty of the elections and electing the right people, yes, absolutely. They've got to get people in there who are not going to lock them up <clears throat> in homes and, uh, and uh, doll them up with, and insist that they wear masks one day and not the next day, and then have masks the next day, sell their masks to China, and then insist that they wear them right everywhere they go, even outside, when they know that the masks often do more harm than good. In other words, 
they need candidates who are going to run on their their liberties and just their ability to um, shall we say take personal responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, but none of this will be anything none of this will accomplish anything as long as we continue and continue to sin against God and defy him especially by the sixth and ninth commandments by the divorces by the, by the by the impurities, the personal sins of impurity, by the sins of impurity they commit publicly, like the adulteries and, and, and the perversions that are going on here. I mean, these, these are really crying to heaven for vengeance. And, uh, I mean, you, you look at the four sins that cry to heaven for vengeance, and we've got them all. We've just been flouting them for God and man, right? Uh, right on down the line, we've been flouting them, right? I mean, the, 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 the taking of innocent life like that, right? The, the taking of innocent life through abortion. I mean, the, these people boast of this, right? Uh, they applaud it in their legislatures, like Cuomo, like Cuomo and his legislator up in New York, applauding the abortions, even up until, until birth, right? He's not the only one. There are many others, Northam and so on, right on down the line. Uh, now, how long do you think any civilization, any society is going to get away from that? Going to get away with that? And, uh, and then you, you look at the perversion, the perversions, the sexual perversions that are going on right now. One of the sins that cries to heaven for vengeance. How long have we been demanding vengeance from God? Right? Just just almost sneering, daring him to do something about it, you know, because we're not going to do anything about it, because we're not going to stand up and stop it. So, um, and then, uh, I mean, uh, oppressing widows and orphans in their need, right? I mean, I mean unfortunately, you look at, um, and I'm not talking about people who actually produce something good. I'm not talking about uh, legitimate investors. I'm talking about this entire financial setup they've got now, uh, which is so completely corrupt. It's just basically ch chasing money. It's just manipulating money. That's all it is. Money manipulation. And um, it's it's as foul as foul can be. You know that this is. There are people who are actually trying to produce something to do some goods and services, and over them, there are people who become billionaires doing nothing but manipulating money. And um, that is very evil. And then on top of that, you have the, uh, you know, the, the, the um, defrauding labor of their, of their wages. That's the fourth. Um, and again, I mean, again, I think the, what we had here before, when there was some vestiges of Christianity left in corporate America, I mean, we actually had employers who cared about their employees. And it's the old story of Scrooge and, and uh, Tiny Tim and uh, Cratchit and, you know. Um, this is what we got now, basically. And, uh, I mean, corporate America basically just doesn't even consider, you know, the personhood of its employees, you know. Just, they just trade people on and off. Uh, whatever uh, the market will bear, whatever, whatever serves the bottom line, right? And uh, it is very evil. And there are a lot of people who are just being uh, vandalized by this in their own personal lives, they're, and they're victimized by this. Um, who are honest wage earners who are just trying to, trying to make a living. Uh, and why? Is it because of capitalism? No, it's because of socialism. It's where you have this collusion between corporate America and uh, and uh, government, where government and corporate America are working hand in glove to promote each other, boost each other, keep each other in power, increase each other's power. Um, I mean, what, what, what is socialism but exactly that, right? When, uh, no, government might not, uh, those in government not, not, might not own, the government might not nationalize everything, but government is actually bought by those who do run these corporations, then what do you do, okay? That's backdoor socialism, and it can be every bit as fierce as anything the Soviet Union ever saw. These are the sins that cried heaven for vengeance, and, I, and I, I'm afraid that vengeance is uh, just 
we're staring into, into the face of the vengeance mm -hmm. right now. Father, you I still God is well be merciful if we beg Him, uh, we convert and change our ways. You you mentioned all, the, all of these uh, attacks that are being waged on our on our country. Why why is there so much emphasis on attacking our country? I mean, you we just talked about all, all of these terrible sins that that were steeped in the four sins: the cry to heaven for vengeance. We proudly flaunt these here in America. Why? What makes America so special then? Why? Why is there so much emphasis on attacking the United States? Well, I'm not necessarily an American exceptionalist. <laughs> okay, there are other countries that are under attack too. I mean, all of Europe was under attack for literally hundreds of years. Okay, by Islam, literally hundreds of years, continually. It took them, you know, somebody hundreds of years, five, four, five hundred years for even. even the Christians of Europe to even react to the aggression of Islam, okay? And uh, now, of course, you know, the Christians are being accused of being the aggressors, which is uh, be laughable if it went so. It's the opposite of the truth. Um, I mean, so it's, it's not just a lie. It's what Father Michelli, Father Vincent Michelli called the big lie, you know? Um, but, um, so that, that wherever there's any vestige of, of Christianity or a constitution that is based upon the natural law of God, wherever there's anything left like that, any vestige of that, it's under attack right now. It's under attack in Australia. It's certainly under attack in whatever is left of Christianity, in the social life, uh, political life of the nations of Europe. It is absolutely under assault there. Um, and just about anywhere else you look in the world, I mean, in Canada, it's gone like totally socialist, right? Uh, they're they're even well uh, ahead of us, ahead of us in the descent into chaos. Um, there are still many people in the United in the United States of America, though, who still believe in the natural law of God, and they still believe that abortion is evil and they believe that these perversions are evil and they're trying to protect their children from them and people who are still trying to resist them to resist these evils to what extent i don't know to resist unto blood yes there are those who are willing to resist under blood and i think it's because in the united states we have a significant number of people and i think the election of donald trump has shown that that, uh, I mean, let's face it, many of the people who voted for Donald Trump didn't want to vote for Donald Trump. They voted for him because they saw the choice was between Donald Trump with all of his issues and the powers of hell, basically. I mean, they essentially saw it that way. And um, even to this day, people, you know, when they talk about things that, Donald Trump does the way he does them, and which makes people just kind of shake their heads sometimes. They just wind up saying, but thank goodness, thank goodness we don't have the alternative right now. Because the alternative, alternative was unthinkable. There were many people who were actually thought in this country that if the alternative was elected, that it would have been the end. That there, there would have been no, no retrieval of any of America after that. It would have been lost. Um, and even to this day, I think there are people who have felt that way and still do feel that way. Um, I feel that way, <laughs> frankly. <coughs> so I, I think because of the number of people here who still, uh, e even if they don't are not leading the most moral lives themselves, recognize there is a moral law, and uh, they still believe in the commandments of God, and uh, they have a certain allegiance to God, however distorted their view is of their, their, by faith. Um, so I think in this country too, people are willing still to make sacrifices. Those sacrifices were imposed on them tyrannically, state after state governor in this uh, virus situation. And I think people have uh, actually have come out of it maybe a little bit stronger, thinking, okay, uh, we've had a little privation here. And yes, it stings, but we see, now we see what's going on here. We realize we have so much to lose, and we have to uh, make sure we don't lose that. 
but I, I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, I, I don't know if I'm right about this, Tom, that the, uh, um, the, the billionaires club who are trying to re remake the world uh, in their own, according to their own schemes, uh, see that, well, we've, we've, we've played our hand and now we have to have to see it through to the bitter end. Um, in, a, in a sense, I hope, that, I hope that's true, in a sense, because I hope that people do realize mm -hmm. there's something going on here that me, demands our attention. And, uh, hey, you know, look, every day it goes, it goes by recently, uh, hearing people say, oh, the new normal, the new normal. You hear the new normal, the new normal. Well, that's not my new normal. I don't think that's new, your new normal either. I don't think you're ready to say this is normal for my children. No, no. This is not normal for my children to grow up in a world like that. What you say is your new normal. I don't accept your new normal. Right? I'm going to resist your new normal. Well, this is the new normal that has been foisted upon us by the Billionaires Club, right? And um, it is absolutely anti-Christian. It's absolutely anti-Christ, right? It is above all anti-catholic starting with francis okay and when i say catholic i mean traditional truly traditional catholicism and uh i'm hoping and praying more and more people come to recognize it for what it is and get back to practicing the true traditional catholic faith um maybe they never grew up in it but i when i say they, they find their way back to it maybe they didn't grow up in it maybe their fathers didn't but their grandfathers did, their great-grandfathers did, their great-great-grandfathers grew up in it, somewhere along the line, right? And uh, I, I, I hope that they can find their way back to that, to the true traditional Catholic faith. And uh, it, it might be having to run through the minefield, but if that's necessary, so be it. Um, anyway, sorry to wax instead <laughs> okay. of wait here but uh, you look like you're ready to uh, <laughs> well we've got a, a curfew tonight in norwood we do isn't that wonderful we have a curfew <laughs> yeah, in it's our new normal in peaceful norwood, norwood tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there has not been i don't know i haven't seen any bricks delivered here not yet. but they have been delivered around cincinnati and the deputies have seen that mm -hmm. and around the major cities you know i wonder you know, after seeing that happen for a day or two, suddenly piles of bricks appear overnight. What if it's occurred to anybody to kind of stake that out and watch that and see who brings those bricks? Who offloads that, those bricks? Where they come from? Who orders them? Get the license plate number. Maybe you detain the individual who's dropping them off. I mean, this is not rocket science now. You know what I mean? Yeah. We ought to start figuring some of these things. And when you see these videos of, of these white fellows, okay? These white guys reaching into their pockets and passing out money to these young black kids in these crowds of, of looters and rioters, passing out money and giving the directions where to go, what to do, what fires to start, with what material. Why didn't somebody detain those people? There was, there was one, I mean, there, there's so many videos now that are just tearjerkers. You see people beaten. So, but there was one today that really, really, really got to me. It's a black lady, an old black lady. And she talks about how they looted her neighborhood, they rioted in her neighborhood, they just burned down this store, they burned down that store, they burned down the other store. These are stores in her neighborhood. This is where she shops for the things she needs to live. She says, what am I going to do now? It's like she's totally lost. She's lost her neighborhood. And she says, the buses aren't running now. I can't even go to get the things I need to live on. What about her? You know. So, so they did this to her in honor of El George Floyd. No, no, they're just criminals. They're terrorists. And until they start being treated that as ter terrorists, they're going to get their way, and they're going to keep hurting everybody's grandma. Uh, just felt, felt so badly for her because where does she go? What does she do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the rest of us may have resources, but she has none. And what she, little she had, they destroyed. So these are the victims. Um, but the real victims are the ones who lose their souls over all this. So sure. we have to pray. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, Father, we'll keep doing that, and uh, thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate all your time. Well, it's early time. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks to all of our viewers as well for watching this episode of What Catholics Believe. Until next time, we ask that you all remember the words of Our Lady at Fatima to consecrate yourselves and your families to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and to pray and do penance. Thank you, and God bless you.